We're going to talk about the Quicksilver Mercury Tri Test. What this is, this is a um, specific diagnostic test, it's a lab test um, that, in my opinion, a lot of people's opinion, is the absolute best test that's equipped to, de to detail whether you're mercury toxic, um, the likely source of your mercury toxicity, and how well your body is excreting or dealing with the, the mercury toxicity. Okay, so let me talk about what that means. One is, are we mercury toxic? Um, most people, in, unfortunately, in this day and age, have mercury in their body. It's just a fact of nature. It's in, it's in the water. It's in the air. Um, but do you have levels that um, should be that you should be concerned about? Um, one way we can do this is we can compare, um, you know, we can compare you to the the whole panel of people that have have performed this test over the history of time, and see where you fall. If you're in the lower levels, um, chances are that maybe you should be concerned, but not worried about it. I'm, I'm concerned about, I'm concerned about the environment, but um, not, you can't be worried about every single little thing. So is this something that you particularly should be worried about? And you can find out by performing this test and finding out whether you have appreciable levels of mercury in your body compared to what, um, what might cause symptoms in the average person. Um, when I talk about the likely sources, um, this is something that most mercury tests do not do. There, when mercury is in the body, it can tend to take um, one of two forms. One is the inorganic mercury, that's usually from the dental amalgams, um, or organic mercury, which is from, usually from fish. There are other sources, and there is crossover between the two, but knowing where or, or how the mercury likely, how the mercury that's in your body likely got there um, is really important because we can't just focus on detoxification. We want to make sure that we're also going to eliminate the source of contamination in the first place. So. Um, that is an important factor that's not addressed by most tests, and the reason is because, like I said, this is the mercury tri test, and by mercury tri test meaning it uses blood, hair, and urine. Um, a lot of tests will, supposed mercury tests will um, only test one of those things, or maybe two, and without doing all three, you're actually going to miss out uh, a big part of the picture, and. In my in my opinion, that's there's you're missing the point. It would be like if you um if you thought <laughs> you know if you thought you broke a bone in your arm, but you just do a little snapshot and you and you you don't worry about doing the whole arm. Well, what's the point if you, if you're hoping to catch something and and you only do partial tests, then you, a lot of people are going to miss on important information and waste their time and um and potentially threaten their health. Okay, and one of the most important uh, factors of this test, well, one is that um. Although many people might think that blood testing is not um, particularly uh, effective at detecting mercury, this company has developed methods uh, whereby they can get a much, much greater sensitivity um, and detect blood levels much lower than any test previously. What, the way the other people deal with that is, is they give you chelating agents so that it draws all the mercury in your body into the bloodstream so they can measure it, which is horrible for you, and then they compare these inflated levels to people's non-inflated levels. In other words, they'll give you a chemical that's going to draw the mercury, I'll say that again, draw the mercury into your bloodstream, then they test your blood, and they compare that amount of mercury, which by this time you're probably sick as a dog, um, and they compare that amount of mercury to someone who's walking around that has not had their their mercury drawn into their system. It's not, to me, it's completely not a, an effective test. Um, it would be like measuring your wealth by how much money you have in your pockets. So you just go draw your money out of the bank, put it in your pockets, and they say, oh, you're wealthy. No, you're not. Um, anyways, this test is much more, um, it's much more sensitive, so they're able to detect levels without having to provoke it, without having to give you um, chelating agents or anything like that. Um, they can detect um, levels even at baseline. So by even at baseline, I mean a lot of people will have a short little uh, peaks in mercury after, let's say, maybe um, after eating a fish. You might have a couple days of uh, increased levels. Some tests will detect that in acute mercury poisoning. But then when it goes down to baseline, most most tests, it's below their threshold. They're not testing. They're not going to be able to read that. This test can. And one of the most important factors is um, of this test is that it's, it by comparing these three um, measurements of mercury between the hair, the blood, and the urine, you can get a good idea of how the body is coping with the with the mercury toxicity. Um, some people have a better ability to naturally purge mercury than others do, 
In fact, if you're watching this and you happen to be a mercury toxic person and you're wondering why you have so many problems, whereas maybe your neighbor with just the same diet, same feelings, live in the same environment, doesn't, well, some of us are just genetically predisposed or for other reasons uh, predisposed to, um, to become mercury toxic because our bodies are just slower to purge it. And this test will actually be able to tell you that. And the, the way it tells you that is by, it, it, by measuring what's floating around in your bloodstream and what's being excreted through the urine and through the hair. That's how, that's how these things come out. The, um, the inorganic mercury will tend to come out through the urine. So if you have a lot of inorganic mercury in the blood and not much is coming out, then you know that it's just staying there, recirculating. It's not coming, it's, it's staying in the body. And you can measure the, the ratio. And same thing with the hair. Um, that would be for the, uh, the organic mercury. If you guys are um, doing any sort of other mercury testing, um, I well, one, is I'd, like to, I'd like to hear how it's going for you. Um, you can go ahead and put that in the comments. The only caveat I would, uh, or the only warning I would give is just to be careful with some things that seem to kind of give you the answers you want. Uh, I've seen this in some of the hair tests or the the, uh, the provocation tests. And by provocation, I mean the one where they give you chelating agents and then test. Well, people will think, uh, hey, this, you know, this proves what I've been thinking all along or this refutes what I've been thinking all along when they're only giving you a half picture or they're giving you um, distorted readings. So I can see how the errors can go either way. And that's what happens when you're only getting a part of the picture. So once again, mercury chai test, you're gonna test the hair, the blood, the urine. You're gonna find out whether the body has an appreciable load of mercury and how it's dealing with um, the mercury burden that it has. That also gives you a good idea towards um, how to eliminate your potential sources and how to start the detoxification process. So love talking to you guys about this. Any more questions, please put them in the comments. I'll talk to you soon.